you're probably better off with a closer view. I actually like this view. I think the notes are the perfect size to work with. Now, I've mentioned this before. Um, alt left and right to change the right side of a note. So Alt Control left and right will change the left side of a note. Within a line, going left or right will change the note that you are working on. Notice that I'm only working on one line. If I want to switch to another line, I have to hit down or up. So down will make you go down a line, up will make you go up a line. To shift notes up and down, which is used when you're setting the melody, that's what we're going to do in the third part of the tutorial, um, that's control and then up or down. Now, personally, I like to use uh, my keyboard in both of my hands. I think it goes really fast. But you can also work with um, your mouse. So grab the left end here, bring it to the left. Grab the right end here, bring it to the right. Grab the note, bring it up. And grab the note and bring it back down. You can also shift notes. Like if your note is the right length, but it's too early or too late, you can simply click on the note and then move it left, move it right. If you want to do that with your keyboard, for those who are interested, you would hold down shift and then shift left and shift right. So let me bring that back to my starting point. At any time you can hit space or the key equivalent is this one, play, and that will play the amount of time that you've selected. So we could say that this node actually represents oh, 0.5, so this would be, what, point, uh, I don't know, 4 something of a second. So you hit space, and you can do that for your different notes. And then work with the length of your notes using either your mouse or your keyboard. So let me show you how it's done. So if uh, you've been paying attention, you've noticed that what I'm doing is trying to change the length of the notes so that I hear exactly the syllable that is being pronounced by the singer. And perhaps uh, this is a, a little more advanced, but more specifically, you want to hear that um, vowel sound that comes with a syllable. You want to hear that very clearly more so than the consonant. So for example, if you've got a p sound, like a long p, if you're only setting your note to hear the uh sound of the p, that's fine. Um, actually, you'll find that with some syllables, like um, p, something like a p, a k, or an s, the syllable in itself there's actually a little time in which your lips have to move around to form the sound, form the p sound, form the k sound, the b's and the t's and so forth. And if you try to take in the entire syllable, when you're singing, what happens is that you never get the points for the first part of the syllables because you're not doing any sound during that first part. That's your lips moving to get ready for the next part. So it's more important to focus your syllables on the vowel sounds. So I've done uh, these three pages here. So I, I've only, I haven't even gone up or down yet. I've only um, been making them a little, lo a little shorter or a little longer, moving them a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left to make sure that I can clearly hear 
Die, geil, 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 geil. Ing, 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 ing. You and so forth. Now I've done the these three pages. I'm gonna put a pause while I do exactly the same thing, but for the rest of the song. So I'll see you in a bit. Hey, I'm back. I'm not done with the sound yet. Actually, I didn't make it uh, too far, as you can see. However, remember earlier I told you that you would have to split uh, some syllables if the singer changed note within the syllable. And that's something that uh, we can hear in this sentence. So let me just play this little line for you, see if you can hear it. One line, one line only. <laughs> so you may have heard in this word, those, she's actually changing her note. So she starts, those, and then she goes, those. So that would actually be, in this scenario, we have to cut the syllable in half again. So what we do is, once again, either split or verbally, uh, verbally, like manually with our mouse right here. Now, when you're splitting syllables because the note is changing, you have to be careful when you're fine-tuning your notes later on that the different parts of your note are, well, the different parts of your syllable are now the different notes and that you try not to have a, not to include parts where you can clearly hear her changing from one note to the other. Let's see if uh, I can show you what I mean by that. See, this right here would be a bad example. Because you can clearly still hear at the end of the syllable that she's already changing her voice. Now this one is a much better alternative. You can you can hear that something has changed, but we haven't taken that little segment here, like in between the two, which is where she she's uh, switching her notes. So this would be a much better alternative. Now if you're comfortable, if you're familiar with the Ultra Star, you'll notice that we have another one of these. This time, we actually want to keep it. So where we had the tilts before, and we actually meant for these tilts to be other syllables, we replaced them. But this is the symbol that we use in, uh, in Ultra Star. I'm trying to select just this. Okay, well, you get what I mean. This is the symbol that we use in Ultra Star when we're trying to show that within one syllable, the singer is actually changing notes. So this is telling the, the person that's going to be singing the song. It says, keep singing what you're singing. Just be careful that you're going to go up or you're going to go down. But don't start the next word yet. We're still not there. So this is, uh, it's, I mentioned it to you earlier. And I was waiting for um, one occasion where it would appear in the song. And it just appeared here. So now I showed it to you. And of course, when we're going to be setting the melody, we'll have to set a note for this part of the word. So this part of those, and we'll also have to set a different note for the second part of those, which, as we can hear, they're not the same note. All right, now I'm going to put a pause again while I continue working through the song. And I'm back, so I've finished going through all of my songs. And, uh... So, making sure that each syllable is uh, exactly as I hear it. Now, as I've been doing that, you may have noticed some, as you're going to be doing that, you may notice some red lines appearing over here, where there were none before. So, that is Yas telling you that it doesn't like the way, when you see a red line over here, that the page break, so these vertical lines over here, it doesn't like the way that these vertical lines are placed, and you can change them manually so that uh, Yas is happier. See, he likes this one, where I leave two spaces before the next page starts, but he doesn't like it the other way around, when I leave one page, one place, 
one spot, one square <laughs> before the page starts. So you can do it manually or you can um, right click, hit autocorrect to correct one and hit uh, autocorrect all to correct all similar problems at the same time. Now that said, say so I have other issues here. There we go. Um, you may choose to ignore what uh, Yas is saying here. So even if the lines are read, the song is still going to play. Don't worry about it. What worries me or what bothers me is that on some of these songs, I guess this is a bad example because this is exactly the example of a problematic song. The singer is um, going so fast between the different lines that there's not going to be enough time for the line on your Ultra Star game to properly finish and your score to come up before the program has already gone to the next line and you're already supposed to be singing the next line. So bars that are uh, closer than three, so ideally I would have a distance of three here, but then that would mean that my next line, as soon as the game switches to the next line, I have to sing it. This is what those those um, vertical bars mean. That tells the game when it should switch from this line to this line. And if your vertical bar is too close, um, the worst scenario is if your, your vertical bar is past, and that means that you should already have been started singing this line here, but your your game is still on the previous sentence. Now, if your game, if the line is... Uh, Right next to your new line, what it means is that as soon as your game changes from this sentence to this sentence, you're supposed to be singing right away. And if someone who's not familiar with the song is singing, they won't even have time to read the words that, and they're already expected to be singing it. So they're going to be losing lots of points, and I imagine they wouldn't be too happy about that. Likewise, if you put these vertical bars um, too far back, then sure, you have plenty of time to prepare for this little line here, but you're technically still singing and still scoring points, and as soon as you hit this bar, you won't see this line of text anymore. You'll switch to this one, and yet you're still supposed to be singing and making points. So those are points that you're losing, so it's also um, quite frustrating. On some songs you shouldn't have a problem. Like there's, there will be room like this on either side, and you can get, you can get a good three up front, and you can get a good three in the back. Something right here, so you're perfectly fine. And on other songs, like uh, fast songs like this one, or maybe, um, maybe a rap part of the song or something, you won't have enough room. For example, uh, well, these are all pretty tight right here. They're threes and threes. I mean, look at this one. I only have three little squares between the two lines. So basically, however I position my line, someone's not going to be happy. And personally, I'd rather start faster than have the game switch to a line when I'm still singing the previous line. That's quite frustrating. Um, you'll realize that yes will encourage pushing back rather than pushing forward, as I've shown in the example previously, where it was happier when I was, uh, when I had my line closer in the back, I'm trying to grab the line again, it was happier when I had the line closer in the back, I wasn't as happy when I had it up front, in fact, you can see right here, autocorrect, see it just moved my, it just moved my line back. So that was the last thing that I wanted to tell you about on this part, and now, we're going to be moving on to part three, which is setting the melody for your song. So I'll see you very soon in part three.